Hello, you are welcome to another interesting edition of Issues in the News coming to you from the stables of the Silverbed News 24. Here on this platform, we bring you a detailed analysis of issues as they drop on the burner of politics, of economy, and of society. My name is Eshomomo Imodu. I'll be your host uh, this evening. And joining me to take a look, deeper look at these uh, issues are uh, my colleagues. Here yeah, I have Abe Olonimbe. Nice to have you join us. It's here. my pleasure to be here. Good evening, Nigerians. Okay. And also, Charles Carlo, the CK himself. Sure, thanks. So thanks for having me again today. And um, I think um, the polity is really heating up. Heating up. Yes. <laughs> have they gathered to buy you forms? Is your Kada riders that bring you your form or who? Uh, of which uh, the past week, our Kada yeah. riders did say they were interested. Then some hawkers too. Some so they, 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 they are saving they money said, to get you your form. Absolutely, they said they were coming. So I'm yet to know. But uh, one of my very good friends in River State do, they has said that um, uh, seriously that uh, market women are, are really putting together funds to get the forms for him. I think I should, I should join, I should join. So people, so people should get that for, uh, money to buy me for. I already know you have a grassroots follower. <laughs> like, <laughs> <that. laughs> and we will be joined by two other interesting guests via Zoom. I won't let out detail about this individuals, but when it's time, you will see them blazing. Now, uh, we have two major issues we will be uh, bringing to you today. One is a letter or a speech by the <laughs> by Bishop Matthew Cooker. His message to the nation and to Mr. President. We'll get to see what did he have to say again. Remember every time this man talks, it's like fire burning some individuals. Then the other one is the sad tale coming from Chris Land School. What exactly is happening? What is happening to our parents? What's happening to our schools? We'll bring you all this in the course of this 50 minute uh, discussion. But let's hit it, uh, the ground running this way. Let me start with you, CK. Yeah. Bishop Coker then disappoint you, I guess. No, he did not at all. Bishop, Bishop Cooker did say that um, in his uh, usual self, you know, Bishop Cooker uh, sometimes, uh, like um, a typical Adam to Shomole, that they will say that uh, those of them that are closer to the ground, they need mm. fear no fall. You know, Bishop Cooker came out fully to say, look, the only thing that is working in Nigeria today is corruption. That nothing else is working that while the bandits and terrorists are taking over large parts of Nigeria, the only thing that's working is corruption. That the, the uh, my friend will say, the AK-47 economy hmm. is growing phenomenally. And Bishop Kuka did not disappoint. He came to say, look, Nigeria is bleeding. That Nigeria has been um, there's a word that Nigeria has been divided from bottom up. Mm. That Nigeria, the seed of division is, you can see it all over the country. Okay? And that security wise, everybody is afraid. Mm. You don't know what will happen to you the next trip you want to take, either by road, by air, or by sea. So he's saying that now, and the whole thing, the ball stops on the table of the president. He says it almost looks as if the president does not have um, a say, does not have anything to do about it again. Mm. That while all these things are happening, corruption thrives. And Bishop Kuka almost, he, you know, he was almost speaking almost less than 24 hours or thereabout after the president granted amnesty to about 157 people, including two former governors, mm. you know, who had been convicted for corruption. So Bishop Kuka just said, look, what is driving in our country now is corruption. That everywhere you place your feet is corruption. 
that the president himself, who has been almost like the sole uh, person fighting corruption, almost seems as if um, he's given up. So that's where we found ourselves. Now, now let me read out, take, take, so I attempt to take a quote before I come to you from Father Koka. It's like the, the government has slid into hibernation mode and is therefore so hard to know whether the problem is that those in power do not hear, see, feel, know, or just don't care. Abi. I think I agree totally with uh, Reverend Father Martin Kuka. The problem with us as people is that in the government of President Muhammad Buhari today, the president is the only integrity man in that government. If you, re if you remember in, the, in about a week ago, the Minister of Transportation was saying there was plan for them to make sure the Abuja Cardinal Trail Line was secured, that a memo was presented to the FEC for it to be approved, that it was not approved in court. But it didn't tell us that, look, the company uh, reco uh, recommended by him mm. was not even qualified to do that job. That should tell you the corruption level in this administration. Uh, it's uh, about money, 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 what I can no, grab. No, no, I, I, let, let, let's let's, let's uh, place this issue, the one you just raised, in, in the right perspective. He did a memo to fake to, fake, to provide... Recommending the company to provide the security. Security, monitoring on the rail track. The rail track from Abuja to Kaduna. It was rejected. Yes, by fake. Now... Abi, whether the company is qualified is not the issue. You could reject the company and ask for a credible com okay. company, an okay. alternative right there at the to fake do, meeting, yes, the provide a credible company because of the significance yes. of, of that, that, project. that project. So rejecting it is not there at all. It simply shows that we don't understand the whole essence why we needed to monitor the rail track. The whole essence of security. But another thing too is Abuja to Kaduna rail track. What happens to Lagos to Ibadan rail track? What happens to Lagos to uh, Ibadan to Ugeli? No, we can secure Ugeli, Abuja to Kaduna and leave those ones. Worry track. to Itakwe. Okay, uh, worry to Itakwe, exactly. Even the new ones that are building from Potako to Medugri. What Medugri. happens to them? Okay, so it has to be holistic. Okay, so let it not look as if there's only one particular area you're also getting that done. Mm. But the thing is, security must be holistic. Mm. And it almost looks, just as he said, it looks as if the Buhari government has gone into hibernation. Mm. Yes, because I'm also expecting of which, why we were trying to get a government reaction to it. Because government reaction is also going to be caustic, because they're going to, they're, 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 they're going to get personal mm. with Bishop Kuka. Mm. Okay, but the main thing is, he has raised some issues. The issues that he has raised, are they genuine? Are they issues that are cogent? Is there anything? Because now, the, our last show, we spoke about if the elections was going to hold or not. Mm. And I've also mm. done some analysis. Mm. Now, the, the, the terrorists came and told, the, told us that President Buhari knows what they want. And they want direct talks with him. He knows what we want. And the president didn't come out to tell us anything. But these same people now came and said, you, we have about 16 of our commanders. If you release them and give us money on top of it, we're going to release these over 100 passengers that we are holding. So what is it that the president knows? Now they, they, they just told you what, what, yes, what, what, what they're demanding. No, maybe there could be more. Release our leaders. There could be more that we don't know. Because now, if they have taken over so much land, now, is election likely going to take place? Now, they have, now, they, they, you know, already what you know, just as we all know that, if you see how long they have, how far they have gone with our security agencies, it is almost like one for one. They will go head on with them. So if it's going to happen like this, and we're talking about election, who says that they're not going to take over those areas and make election not to take place, which also means that the tendency, because the Constitution also gives the president the authority to declare state of emergency at least the first six months. So these are all the issues. And these are also the things that Bishop Kuka has also said that, look, we have to deal with this. 
Because there's no part of Nigeria that is safe right now. There's no part. Just as we just spoke, uh, just as we are dealing with that, in the southeast, they've been killing policemen. We don't know if it is ECN or ESN or IPOB. IPOB says they don't have anything to do with it. So police has not also gone to Soke. We have arrested one person to Soke. This is where it's coming from. Neither have we also seen the actions of the DSS to infiltrate them to identify that who are the people doing this. The Ibo State Governor um, um, Hope Uzodima has insisted that politicians are behind this. But he has refused to name them. We all remember that earlier this year, sometime in January, I think so, he said he was going to hold a stakeholders meeting. And he was going to announce the names of the everybody, the, the, perpetu the politicians. And that never came. He never he came. He didn't mention any names. Okay? And we have also been here. The federal government has over a hundred names. People that have been accused. Their data, bio data, has been given to them by the government no, in Dubai. No, 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 no. To say, look, as far as we are concerned, these people are complicit. But government says, up till now, government has not done anything. They did promise us to publish their names. We haven't seen these names. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we even need the Father Coca to, tell, to us. tell us that we have gone from here to Down. here. Absolutely. It's so sad that this is happening in a nation called Nigeria. Somebody said, so I was even who that if care is not taken, sometime later our children will come up and say, was there in Nigeria? May we not get to that point. Now, Abi, just look at it this way. Just elucidate certain points. Started with the rail track monitoring. And I remember what happened in the BRT uh, uh, bus in Lagos when that lady was, was killed. killed. The whole noise was, was there no CCTV in camera in the that, bus? In that bus. Everybody has gone quiet about it now. How many weeks after? Has Lagos State come to inform us that all the buses now in Lagos are fitted. They've not said it. Not said it Until before. another disaster happens, we'll, co we'll come crying. Now, which means all our trains must have CCTV cam cameras in all the coaches. I remember some time back, I took a trip from Lagos to Kano. I was doing a story on, on, on train, and I and my cameraman for, went for two nights. I, I'm not sure I can do that again. The, the, the coaches are not fitted with closed circuit cam ca camera, which means, mm -hmm. like Siki just highly pointed out, we need to get those things in place. Of course. Absolutely. We need to get them in place. Then you, you talked of the East, for instance, where you have uh, uh, people at, the, at uh, uh, INEX centers being killed. Being killed. And we're talking about the election. Now, I'm not shutting you up, Ash. Yeah. Let me now, let me, just an information. Now, some people have gone for Easter, mm -hmm. Easter holidays, Easter break in the East. Now, today is Monday. Yeah. As at yesterday, as at yesterday up until 11 p.m., okay, I got information from my friends. They were all moving from the core east yeah. to Delta State, to River State, because of today being Monday, being mm. they they sit, sit, they at sit at home. Mm. At home. Because all of them say they want to travel by Monday. Ordinarily, yes. Monday morning they can leave. So if you are stuck there in the east, you can travel. You can't you can't travel. Can't, you can't leave. So that is the level of insecurity in the that we can find as far as we are as far as we are concerned in the southeast now. No, no, Abe, do you do you totally blame government or we, or we should blame ourselves for not having enough memory to understand the circles of election and things that comes with it. You want me to explain why? Uh, even before you go into that, as, according to what CK just said, let's leave the messenger. Let's focus on the message of Father Matthew Kuka. Judicial sector is in shambu. Education sector is non-existent. As a student has been in the house for the past one year, there about. Lecturers are crying. Doctors are crying. Look at the road. Look at our roads. They are all dead. It's just we journalists look, have refused to go on look, strike. Look at, look at the hospitals. No equipment. Look at the brain drain. Most of our doctors are in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, London, America. At this point in time, I think there are, the past days, there was a National Council of State meeting. I thought with the attendance of the three former head of state, they should have sit down, even for a whole day, analyze the problem of Nigeria critically and prefer groundbreaking solutions to all this problem.
it's, it's too much. The only we one are we got here, the, the, no, the pardon. Abbe, Abbe, Abbe the only one we got here was the pardon. But Abbe also is, has, is that our problem? Abbe also has information. Those of them that were not there physically were there virtually. Virtually. Oh. So, yes, so virtually. all the all the former heads of state participated were in, in that meeting. Technically, they were in attendance. So I don't know, but they say there were two major things that were discussed: security and economy. But since we have not gotten the communique of this is why we talk about accountability. Yes. Yeah, if there was a council of state meeting, why would it take us forever to have an idea what was what discussed? discussed at that meeting? You see, you see, it's 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 not as if government is doing us a favor. A favor. No, 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 no. You are there because we placed you there, yeah. whether present or okay. former. And taxpayers' that's money that's was that's spent it. to bring all these that's former heads of state from their bases, yes, yes. former justices of the chief justices of from the all country, their bases, from all their bases, bases to Abuja. Then you you've not told us what is happening. It, it is so sad. It is pathetic. It is pathetic. This is not what we what what, what, what the the founding fathers of our country planned for in 1960 when we came together as a country. Hmm. Okay. Without vision, we have a country that will. In the next 20 years, will be a developed country just like Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. But look back, we are far, far behind them. Far, far behind. Now, let's quickly go on this break. And when we come back, we'll still have a lot of things to talk about uh, the security situation. And remember, the Christland uh, School is just there waiting for us to throw light. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, we've been speaking on issues in the news, the daily topics that make the headlines. And we've been discussing the security challenge in the country. Just yesterday, Sunday, uh, Father uh, Bishop Koka dropped what some people call a bombshell when he spoke to issues challenging this nation, security and the level of of uh, uh, of deterioration in our polity and also this one on the news talking about the Chrisland College the crisis in Chrisland College and I've, I've been joined by uh, three distinguished Nigerians on zoom remember with me here I have Abe in-house and I have Chaskalo in-house and on zoom let me mention the ones we have we have Ronke Posh I call her Ronke Posh the Posh lady the proprietors of uh, a, a private school Nice to have you join us from Gepoch. Also, I have Adeni Kuno, who's also be, be joining us on Zoom, and also Achike Chude. Nice to have you all joining us to throw light on these issues. Now, let me start this way. Ronke, if you're there, Ronke Posh, nice to have you join us this evening. Uh Okay, if you can hear me very well, were you, are you aware of the letter, by, uh, the, the message by Bishop Koka to the government of Nigeria, how he talked about the deterioration in security and in every other aspect of the polity? Okay. That, 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 let me go over to Achike. Achike Chudi. Hello, Achike yes, Chudi. Okay, nice to have you there. Now I can hear you. Okay, please. I need your reaction to Bishop Koka's letter to uh, the nation. And what do you think about this coming at this material time? Well, there is no, if we're talking, you're talking about reaction, there is, it, I mean, it is not a, whatever reaction that Nigerians, you know, would get from it is not that of shock. Uh, it's not that of, uh, because 
uh, he has spoken uh, a few times in the past, and uh, he has been as skating as he has been this time around. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, when Charles was talking the other time, he was talking about the possibility of um, a fight back by the president's hand handlers, specifically uh, Garbashew and uh, Femi Adesino. But then I think I, I found it in a way, uh, in my mind, I was okay, let them let them do their best, let them give, him, give the, their best shot. Because if they are going to respond to Kuka and they try to insult him as uh, they have been doing in the past, then they should also uh, not forget uh, the Sultan of uh, Sokoto. Then, of course, the Alkali, the former, you know, Imam of uh, the Akbo uh, uh, legislative quarters, the mosque there, that was sacked. Then they should also do the same thing with uh, the um, Northern Elders Forum and do the same thing with the Catholic Bishops Conference that made a statement, I think, around the same time that the Sultan made his own statement. And, uh, you know, other groups that have been talking in the past, you know, the reality is that, um, you know, uh, uh, Father Kuka can be brutally honest and, and, and sincere in what he says. I think he has gotten to a point where a no bad situation point, where you just have to say what you have to say for the good of the country. And, uh, and in fairness to him, I think he, he, he allowed for a period of a two years honeymoon for the Buhari government to begin to get their acting, you know, their acts together when they came into power. But obviously, that two, the two years expired a very long time ago, and we have seen what is happening. Nigerians in body bags, killings here and there. The reality is that President Muhammad Buhari and his government have lost track of the security situation in this country. They have, they have lost it completely. So anything, any statement that they make to the contrary about, you know, how they are going to go after the terrorists and so on, Nigerians will dismiss it with a wave of the hand because we have seen that they have so much incapacitated this government. And just like I said, we don't know whether they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are just sitting back and they don't care about what is happening because that's the impression you have. After all, we could even draw that conclusion. After all, the president is known to travel when the country is in, is in, is in the greatest uh, you know, period of crisis. When people are being killed, he travels abroad. When his abroad and people are killed, he doesn't come home to Nigeria. He does whatever he wants to do abroad and all that. That is not the mindset of a president that is committed, a president that is serious, a president that has feelings for his country, for his citizens, a president that is patriotic. And you can see the way I am trying, because look, these killings have gone on for too long. And, 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 and it's just that some of us are lucky because we don't have relations that are suffering you know, that have been killed as a result of all this, uh, you know, uh, uh, cry, violence that is going on in this country. So, Kuka is absolutely right. He has not said anything that other people have not said. In fact, the Catholic Bishops Conference to which he belongs to said in 2018 that this president should not, you know, be allowed to continue to supervise over the killing fields of Nigerians, you know, the graveyards of Nigerians. A very serious statement. And the reality is that you know, we're enjoying democracy, long period of democracy, and it is good that we have not had any military adventurers in power. I mean, you know, trying to, uh, you know, uh, 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 seek the overthrow of government. But what we experience today is what we used to, half of, or less than half of what we used to experience before the military steps in. So we're happy that I mean, a lot of people have learned from, you know, the need for uh, the democratic culture to enforce, to abide the democratic the culture. Uh, actually, let me just come, come, come to you with the this, please. Activities of, of the political actors in the country. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, tomorrow the president is expected to meet with the service chiefs. What exactly will you be expecting him to say, and what new strategies do you think they will bring on board, at least to stem this? Uh, uh, this continuous decline in our security situation. Yeah, uh, uh, believe me, I wish I could tell you, yes, now that the president is, uh, is meeting with the service chiefs, you can be sure that something will begin to happen and will begin to see things happening. But unfortunately, the president, look, somebody was hoping today at another forum, somebody who phoned him was hoping that the president will try to get it right. And I said, how is the president who has been unable to get it right in seven, in seven years 
going to get you right in the year in the period of politics. They are all interested in politics. Politics is the most important thing for them. And what will give you an idea of that is that it was the, the massacre of about 50 people in, in Southern Kaduna took place a day before the Congress of the, of the, of the APC. The, the, the leadership and the APC is the ruling party. They all met in Abuja to go square. There was not one second that was spared for the people that were killed in Southern Kaduna. Not one second. It was all gated, it was all party, it was all, look, these people are not serious. Our president is not, is not serious. I showed, he can, we can make all the body language and so, but there's something called motion without movement. So I, 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 it's unfortunate that I have to say this because I was one of those who actually tried to campaign for this president to be, you know, uh, voted to power. And I'm not ashamed of that because it was a position I took that was based on what I was seeing, the misbehavior of the PDP. But what we have seen is a horrendous escalation of the problems that we saw during the PDP. You know, to the extent that they now make PDP look like sense when you look at what is going on. Is it why about, about a dozens were being killed under Jonathan? Hundreds are being killed under Muhammad Buhari, a retired general of the Nigerian army. So what are we talking about? Look at the economy, look at inflation, look at the issue of corruption, working on all fours in the country. So I, I wish that, that the president, that the service chiefs could come up with something new. But don't forget that Nigerians several times in the past had insisted that this service chiefs must be, must be changed. Okay, and actually, let, 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 me, let me quickly put you on hold here. Yeah, and... yeah, actually, let me quickly put you on hold here. Yeah, I will come back to you. I have Adeni Ikunu, uh, who is also standing by to throw light on this. Now, nice to have you join us. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank okay. you. Okay, Mr. President will be meeting with the service chiefs tomorrow. What exactly do you think should be the change in strategy? I think um, I'm tired of the meetings that the president mm. continues to have with the service chiefs. Mm. Um, anytime they kill, he summons the service chiefs to Abuja who probably fly from some part of the country using taxpayers' money to go and have a discussion with the president. But when the president gets back, nothing happens. I think that we should stop the charade. We should stop these uh, meetings that don't produce results. Uh, it's, it will not be something reasonable to say that the president should actually let go of these service chiefs because they just started their work. But what is important in my estimation, is that the president himself, uh, if he's tired of working, should give room for people to help the country. And that is one thing that I think we should understand. The president has not demonstrated that at the moment he has the capacity to deal with the insecurity issues in the country. And one of the things that hurts the most is that when there is a particular issue that affects it becomes difficult for the president to address Nigerians. It is not at every time they kill that you think Garuba Shehu, Premier Deshina, or Alaji Lai Mohammed has to talk to people. There are things that happen that you have to empathize with those who have been killed. So I do not expect anything new from them. And if the president appears or feels that the people he has put in position are not producing results, and it feels giving them the sack is the best thing to do, then maybe that is what he has to do. Because if we do a comparison of the killings that have taken place between the last service chief's departure and the arrival of these ones that are here now, there is an increase. And it is even more dastardly. So when we connect these to what Bishop Hassan Matthew Cooper said, I think it is just a proper reaction. This, he doesn't talk anyhow. That is one thing about Bishop Hassan Kuka. And anytime he makes a statement, he's properly educated. He's somebody that can do his independent findings and research. And as a result of that, he can come to talk about issues that indeed affect the country. So I do not expect much from the meeting because the killings make it seem as if nothing is happening. Now, let me give you this picture. There is a video that has been making the rounds as I speak. And that video actually shows uh, the, the interview granted by 
a foremost musician in this country, in the person of Tai Walao, who was kidnapped around Kaba and Kogi State, who stayed with them until he was released and all of that. And when that guy was released, the revelation he gave in his interview actually shocked me. He said one of the things the people that arrested them told him happens to be that as it is right now, this country belongs to them and they're not getting any, they're not getting the things that belong to them. So a situation where some people say Nigeria belongs to them, that it belongs to their father, then I need to say that we really have to start thinking seriously about the kind of problem we're in. No individual is too big in this country. So when you find somebody tell you that Nigeria belongs to them, then this country is in a big problem. So how do you now deal with people that know the ins and outs of all the forests and trek like five, six hours at a time from one destination to the other? And at times when they attack, you find out that there are no security operatives around the areas where these guys walk, where they walk past. So it's a very complex web that is difficult, humanly speaking. But the reason people take power is to solve problems. And if the people who take power and trust cannot solve problems, then according to Bishop Hassan Kuka, then maybe the president should not actually be superintending over the country because he has not shown capacity. If you find yourself in a university, for instance, you are supposed to not go below 1.5 in your CGPA for every session. So if the president has not done up to one in the CGPA for the session, how is he supposed to have ideas to continue? So if the country cannot allow people in the education sector continue with the studies or continue studying things because they don't measure up, how then would we say the president in his incapacity should continue? So this is how I open this conversation. And the meeting with the service chiefs, except of course he's sending them back in. This is just what I want to say. Okay, thank you so much. For us. And I tell you, we must take it very seriously. Bon, yes, please. Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you so much for your thoughts in that in, in that regard. But you see, uh, what 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 uh, bothers me most is we've gone through this uh, this particular phrase before, and at, at the eve of every election, you kind of see accelerated action against against uh, bandits, against terrorists, whatever names they are called, and it happened at times of Jonathan. There was an improvement; everybody clapped for him. And uh, so recently, the, this president said that we're going to see improvement. So before the election, we might see a marked up improvement in that. But must we always wait and allow people die and allow serious insecurity? Then we come with the magic wand and we begin to solve them. And Nigeria begin to clap because an election year is around the corner. Just briefly from you before I move to the next topic because Ronke Posh is waiting, standing by for me. You know, we, we are, um, the way the configuration of security agencies. Mm. We have to be proactive, not reactive. Mm. Because that is also, I, I remember either once or twice in a couple of other fora we have discussed. I, I said I used to know one guy who was in SSS then, when I was in primary school, up until secondary school. I think up until even when I get into, I didn't know this guy was in mm. SSS. I mm. did not know. Mm. It was long after I had finished school so one day I met my eldest brother, I said, come, what of this guy? He said, ah, he has retired. Retired from where? <laughs> then he has retired from SSS. I said, what? But these days we know them from the one. What? I did not know. Mm. And this guy was mm. everywhere. So which also means that he was also everywhere giving his reports. Although some of them in the field say they give their reports. It is not as if they are not aware. They give their reports. But where does this report end up? And end up. And that is very, very serious. Now, Abby. Uh, uh, you want to have a closing one on this security before we move to Chrisland? I think one of the greatest problems that the devil the security architecture is a lack of gathering intelligence. Okay. Lack of gathering intelligence or even working on the intelligence already gathered. Now, okay. Now, the other issue that uh, kind of came into us this week is the sad story from Chrisland School, where uh, a particular, that, that particular school took children out for excursion, not in Nigeria, to Dubai. Dubai. And uh, I learned a video uh, leaked to the public where a 10-year-old girl and probably her school, uh, her, her classmates, were involved in some unseen art. 
it's not a video I want to watch. I've not watched it and I don't ever want to watch such video. You will understand why in the course of this program. And uh, it's so disturbing because this person is a minor. I have a proprietress here, uh, an educationist, uh, Roque Porsche. Now, Roque Porsche, nice to have you join us. Good evening. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. When you had the story of Chris Land, involving a 10-year-old. How did this meet you as a parent, as a mother, and as a proprietress? I actually heard um, just before midnight, I lost sleep. I was deeply troubled. However, it, didn't, it wasn't a shock. I just felt pain and pity for the family. But it wasn't a shock to my system because these things are happening in schools. Um, and where there are no systems, they will continue. This is not the last case that we're going to hear or something like this. It just happens that this one is in the media. It will continue to happen as long as parents continue to demand the wrong things from um, schools. They don't prioritize the values. Um, as long as there's challenges with parenting, we will continue to have it. It's not going to stop. This is not the last one. Last one. Uh, you talked about parents, parenting, and schools. Now, now, there are quite a lot of things that are coming up. We've, we've seen statements from the Lagos State Government. Uh, we've seen statements from uh, um, the school. The parent also saying it was a rape. I don't want to go into all those technicalities. But how do you expect a parent manage the affairs of their children in the light of what has just happened? <laughs> I, I, the beauty of my own life is that I run a school and I'm also a parent. So I can speak very well of, on both sides. As a parent with a child in a school, an elite school, I know what I can trust them with and I know what I cannot trust them with. My daughter is not in boarding school. It's not a bad school, it's a good school. But I can never put her in boarding school under any circumstances whatsoever. I will not do it. Um, that is my own conviction. That is my own belief. Right now, all her mates are in school studying for final year exams. She's at home. I refuse to send her to school. And I don't care what anybody thinks because I do not trust the children and I do not trust that the school can manage the kind of children that we have these days. So it's not always the school sometimes. Sometimes it's the, the children that have no home training that we have that are out there. It's a big mammoth task for children, for schools to manage these children. So I don't want any stories that touch. I have only one daughter that God has blessed me with. So I will not take any risks with her. So parents need to know that they should not take risks with children. When they go to schools, they want to know the fancy curriculum. They want the ambience. They want to know if they are Microsoft certified. They want to know if they're going to Dubai, to Brussels, to the UK, to the US. They want to know if they are social gatherings. They want to have fancy Mother's Day events. But they forget to say, do your children have home training? Do they greet? Are they polite? What do you do when it comes to discipline? Instead, they come and they strike the teachers. The teachers have no self-esteem. They are scared of the parents. They take bribe from the parents. So these things will continue as long as the values are not there. As long as they cannot punish these children or discipline the children, rather. If they can't do it, then we'll continue to have this sort of issue. If we take children away, then the ratio must be right. I understand because I've listened to this and I've been close to a parent there that is currently in the school. I've listened to a lot of the versions. The ratio was not right, number one. And if you go there, if this didn't happen to the child, because a lot of people have said, oh, the child should be, the girls should be in another hotel completely, the boys should, but that's just rubbish. Because even if they are in different hotels, it can still happen. Boys can still abuse boys. Boys can still play with boys. Girls can still play with girls. So the system is still not in check. You need a system where those children it's anything that is it's watertight. It has to be watertight. If you take children out of the country, if you take children in your care, people have called the girl all sorts of things. I don't care what she is. I don't care if she doesn't have home training. But while she's with the school, the school has a duty of care to save that, that child, to protect that child. That is their duty at that very point in time. And they have let the ball down. They have failed and they have continued to lie. Whether we know all the facts or we don't know all the facts, the fact that that video leaked and it came out whilst the child, children were in their care, it's, abom it's abominable, completely abominable. And we are only hearing about the girl. How about the other boys? They should do it alone because we live in a patriarchal environment where it's only the girl that will be stigmatized. Where are the boys and where are the parents of the boys? So sad this happening. Some, some thoughts just came to my mind and it's that I'm not sure this school permits 
children of that age to bring phones to school. If they permit, then probably education should tell us through light. At what point do you allow your children in school? I'm not talking of your do whatever you want to do at home, coming to school to take yeah. phone. Because you talked about the fact that how did that incident get to the public? So who recorded? Was it the phone of the teacher? Or students were allowed to carry phone, 10 year old to carry phone? Please educate us again. Again, the, the, the phone is insignificant. If I send my child to Dubai, I expect her to have a phone so that I will be in touch. It has to be a way for me to communicate mm. with my child if my child is away. So for me right now, this phone is still insignificant. It's not important to me. What is important is the way is the fact that the girl left her old hotel room and went to another one. How did she get by? Shouldn't somebody have been in there with them, supervising? What if she came out and she got knocked down by a car? What if she was picked up by an adult pedophile? What if that happened? Something worse could have happened. She may have died. So it's still not the phone at all. It's the fact that she was able to leave her hotel room and go to another room where the boys were. Or call it a trick, OK, did she want to pick up her phone charger, whatever the stories may be. It really doesn't matter. We don't need all that details. The fact is that there was a loophole in the system or lack of a system and caused this sort of thing to happen to this child, which was that psychologically affect her for years to come if she doesn't get the right professional help that she needs. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. Let me just quickly talk to my other guest. Achike Chudi, you want, to, you want to shed light on this. As a parent and as a public affairs analyst, this is happening in our society. We're talking about going our society. This is happening to our children. What is your thought on this? Yeah, well, um, it is a very sad affair. Um, it is something that is also that is worrying, but it is something that gives us an idea, again, one more idea about the degeneracy of the Nigerian society, the loss of values in Nigeria, uh, the fact that uh, we don't call, you don't, look, the, the internet, look at the internet for a second, the, we can, the internet has a lot of virtues. There are so many wonderful, great things that have been able, that one has been able to achieve with the internet, but this is part of the vices of uh, the internet itself. But beyond that is the issue of uh, the upbringing of uh, the child. And so when you say that there's a failure, you know, of the school, uh, there's also a failure in uh, the upbringing you know, of the child, you know, because the child has not behaved in certain ways. Then the question you ask yourself is, has this child imbibed all of those values that she needed to have before she goes out? And when she goes out, how does she, you know, conduct herself? All of these things will come from the family, the kind of family background that she is coming from. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the Nigerian uh, society has drifted radically, has drifted so much. And we're beginning to see so many things that uh, should not be part and parcel of who we are that today. And uh, I think that in, that in itself is exceedingly very sad. It is easy for parents. I mean, we saw that with, uh, you know, what happened with uh, Darwin College. We've seen that with so many other people. Sometimes it is either the issue of uh, because of victimization and abuse of children, you know, corporal abuse of children by teachers, or the laxity of the teachers, uh, or the school. I mean, every every whenever students are out, even in Nigeria, they are going on excursion. They always have a chaperone. When they are in the boarding school, boarding school system, they have a housemaster. You know, and their responsibility is to ensure that that the students conduct themselves in ways that are acceptable to the policies of the school. And so you don't even allow this kind of movement. I remember when the university when the university, there was a time you could not, you know, visit a female hostel at a particular time of the day. Maybe you get there around eight, nine. The porters are there to tell you you cannot go in, even though by then some of us were already have like, gotten to the oh. age of eighteen and all of okay. that. Okay. But you need to put policies in place. To ensure that the right things are done, and unfortunately, like the, the madam has said, uh, Porsche, there was a systemic breakdown somewhere. Okay, I'm yeah, not sure that the school deliberately wanted what happened to happen, but there was a failure. Okay, there was a failure. I didn't. I'm coming to you with this. Uh, taking it uh, from the statement by the police, we had they said uh, 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 that that said they're reminding us that there's a cyber. Uh, crime, bullying, whatever, uh, law, and that the police will take it out. My worry is a lot of the, this video is trending on different platforms. And it is not because these platforms are concerned. 
What they are after is, I want to trend. I want to have followers. I want to have traffic. I'm an influencer. I, I want to have traffic. That is what is on their mind. And that is why I don't want to watch it. And I don't care who is, who is sharing it. But I think, what do you think? Should our security agencies keep giving warning? Shouldn't there be a scapegoat? Let's see who will come out to defend and to challenge you for making a scapegoat for people violating this existing law. A minor, you don't share the video. Go in, check who is sharing, and why can't we have it? Why must well, we forever um, keep giving warnings? I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, I need you to know that the police force that we have now is superbly analog and very incapable of doing certain things when it comes to security. If you check the major incidences of attacks across the country, it is a reflection of the incapacities of Nigeria's security operatives to even know the precise locations of those that are destroying Nigeria. The list of what you have to consider is the metadata of the particular video that is shared and those that are sharing it. And if you are able to do that, you bring down those sites because these things are not rocket science. In fact, if you're talking about information communication technology, one of the least in terms of bringing that website is being able to actually detect the sources of this. It says something, I show Momo, which is very important. You talked about the people that do not care about the implication of what they share. They're just interested in trending. It is also a reflection of the immorality that is pervasive in the society. The video is terrible. As a father, as a parent, it destroys me more. Then you also have to consider how did a 10 year old girl get into such acts? And that simply means with the way the 10 year old girl is acting, she probably has been doing something with somebody somewhere before she was thrown out. Then where it also hurts me the more, is the fact that even where the young girl was, we have some other students there in that same place. What level of confidence is that? So apart from talking about police, let's also look at the issue here. So every child that found itself in that room must be taken out of somewhere. Their parents must be caught somewhere. You deal with that on the one hand. The threat that the police is giving is just, is just, is just nothing. It is empty. All the law they are talking about and my cyberbullying is nothing at all. What is important is to save the lives of those children because I can tell you, those children are already destroyed. And we need to run quickly to rescue them or as parents, they may become... So much, Adeni. I uh, wish you dropped that line. Yeah, uh, uh, just because of time, uh, 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 Ronke Posh, I want to have your final comment on this particular sad incident. We have the parents on one side, we have the school management on the other side, we have government. How do we begin to redefine our school system? What exactly can we do? Briefly from you. Sincerely, I, I just want to advise people. Oh. I don't know if, if I'm still on. Yes, yes, you're on. OK, just yes. briefly, because I'm Ronke is about uh, uh, making comments. OK. okay, okay. So, 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 thank you very much. So, as we speak now, they have to quickly run to where these children are and rescue them. They are all in trouble. And I hope that they're able to do that fast. And I also have to say, the Lagos State government has shown, shown itself as an impartial party in this. When the Bowen College will happen, the Lagos State government, the government is always coming to close down schools, close down schools. A situation where the universities are on strike, it shows that government itself is complicit in this destruction of the life of people in school, from university down. So we are talking about a government that doesn't even understand itself. We don't have government, we are patriots in this country. So there is a lot of destruction going on, and I want to plead with those that are sexual psychologists, they have to go and rescue those children right now and bring their parents and lock them up in a place. Their parents are in trouble, those children are worse off. Thank you for having me here. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adele, for sharing your thoughts with us. And Roque, uh, please, you have your space. 
Okay, do you have a particular aspect you wanted me to talk about? Yeah, I look at parents on one conclusion? side, the school authority on one side, government, how do we redraw or what can we do? Because you said this is not the last we're going to hear. Okay. No, it's not the last. I talked a bit about the school. Um, they, they have duty of care for the child. Yes, the parents may have dropped the ball, may not have known certain things are happening in the life of the ch child. But in this particular context, it's not the home training that is, that is the, it's the duty of care over the training right now. Because the school chose that girl, took her there, they should have cared for the child. Now, when it comes to the government closing schools, and when I saw it, I just, I, I laughed because they closed the other school down. And when they closed it down, they are fully back in operation now. So this one is just to calm our nerves down so that we'll be, we'll be calm, you know, closing it down. Before we know how, they're closing it down during the holiday. What's exactly are they closing down? Before we know what's happening, it's your third chapter and it's your business as usual. I don't believe that there's even going to be justice in this case. It's unfortunate, but I lost hope since the last uh, major case that happened. That, that's why I said that it's not the last one. As long as systems are not in place, as long as parents don't continue to demand what they ought to be demanding, they go to school at social gathering, they brag. Funny enough, this particular case, I had about two parents brag to me to tell me that their children were actually going to Dubai. They were telling me, okay, right, do you think that this is the only misconduct that happened whilst they were there? Or is it because they haven't heard about your own childhood? And then during the meeting, some of the parents were still advocating that some people should keep quiet and not bring it out. Yes, I know this thing that happen they should not bring it out they don't want it to happen because it is not your own child when we keep concealing evil i run a school when we I, i'm saying it so that you know because and i also send my child to school so when you conceal evil ultimately it will hit you it may not be your your, your own child now but it can be your own child tomorrow so we must ensure that we stamp out evil from schools. There, this is even beyond evil. It's a demonic act because we've heard about pregnancy tests being run multiple times. We've heard about the mom. I, I watched the video from the mom being told different lies. I saw the letter online, which didn't seem to tally. Okay. So we must know that we have a duty of care. We should not be defensive. We should not tell lies. It's better not to say anything at all than to cook up lies to cover up a story when it comes mm. to the life of a child. Mm. In all mm. of this, the most important mm. person is the child. And even whilst mm. I'm in a panel with four, four men, I notice that I keep hearing the girl. I keep hearing the girl. Okay. I keep hearing the girl. This all right, thank you. Thank you so much, myself. Ronke, for sharing your thoughts with us. Definitely. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I appreciate your coming. And Wednesday will be another time. We're still going to bring the issue of Chris Land uh, uh, to the front burner on Wednesday when we'll still come to another session of uh, uh, issues in the news. Achike Chude, thank you so much. Adeni Kunu, thank you so much for being part of the show. And because of time, let me just have my in-house people give final word, just final word from you. I think what we have in our hand is a really delicate issue. How would a 10-year-old girl leave her own room come to go to another room to engage in a moral act. It's on hard when we are growing up. I don't know, I don't know what the world just is coming to. I don't know. I, I, I still, I still, just as um, Ron Kepoch did say, I still believe that the Ministry of Education, we have, um, they, they call them um, the monitors, mm. supervisors. Mm. Super, su Inspectors. 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 Education inspectors. Mm. Education inspectors. Where are they? So, so, what so, were in primary school? We and, had them. And, and they will come still, to school it, unannounced. You know, it still comes down to the fact that we are reactive, we are not proactive. Mm -hmm. Because ordinarily, if you are an education inspector, your work is the moment you get to the office, you get to Ministry of Education or the local government education department, you sign in, you go out, you tell your boss, oh, boss, I'm going to catch a local government. And you don't even tell your boss the school you're school going to. It is when you come back. You say, oh, boss, I went to government secondary school, for instance, Ikeja. All right. Thank I also you so went much. to government primary school, Ikeja. Thank you so and this much. is what I came out. All you right. Know? Charles, but because no, of time, thank you so much. Abe, thanks so much for being part of it. Just Carlo, thank you so much for being part of it. I know time is not on our side now. So Wednesday will be another opportunity for us to bring you more interesting stories about developments in our country. My name remains a Shomamo Emodu. Let's see you on Wednesday.